indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck when we fall to our knees as we humbly He's a great God. Today, we look at the word and the power of the word. Despite pop culture's embrace of profane ramblings of modern day rappers, and if some think that there be no consequence to it, uh, and regardless of the fact that there's a steady diet of unparalleled family breakdown, family degrading sitcoms on TV, we should take a moment to reassess the language we traffic in. Jesus makes a very powerful statement in Matthew chapter 12, and I'm going to quote it for you. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. In this study, we see the recipients of the word of covenant spoken by God to Abraham. We see direct example of word in power and in action. He says to Abraham, in Isaac shall your seed be called. Not Ishmael, but in Isaac. So Israel, having been blessed, having been called out as, as part of a promise to Abraham, is in a place where having been delivered out of slavery, they're now complaining about not having meat. Yes, they are. And God says, okay, I hear your prayer. This was in the Hebrew, the word shigayong tefila. Uh, shigayong, uh, shigay is a complaining uh, prayer, a complaining prayer. Uh, prayer of complaint, we would probably phrase it. In Exodus chapter 16, where you study, you can see the Lord spake to Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. So this is Israel, Jacob's children. Speak to them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. So here I am. I'm going to respond to your prayer, to your crying, to your words. Right? And it came to pass that in the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that was laid got, had gone up, behold, the face of the wilderness where it lay was a small round thing, as it were the white or hoar frost that was there, that it was. And, and, and the, uh, the thing was from heaven. It was the thing on the ground that nourishes from heaven. What is this thing that nourishes from heaven? Well, they, they, they called it manna. They say it's manna. It's the thing which was. They saw it. They don't know what it is. It's manna. Manna simply means the thing, the what, whatever it is, the thing. And uh, while they, they, they look at it, we should explore this even deeper because later on this thing is called bread. Okay, so when we look at it from that perspective, manna, bread, the what, or may I say, the whatever, whatever is on the ground. And I submit to you today, the most important thing, the most significant thing that God ever gave them, or us, for that matter, is that word, that thing, that nourishment from above. Because the nourishing thing from above can only be the word of God. This is the, this is the thing that caused things to become the word of God. The word caused light to come when there was none. You see? The word caused the dry land to appear when 
there was none. The Word. Uh, the Word caused the sun to rise and the moon to glow. All of these are results of what came from heaven, the Word of God. The scripture tells us in Hebrews that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God. And not only that, but critically that the word of God is God. In the scripture of John chapter 1, he says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and God was the word. So the thing that came from heaven, the bread that came from heaven, came down, as Jesus later says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of heaven. He says, I am that word. The word that came is the thing that's needed. I use the word thing or the what I said, the word whatever, because you should understand it from the perspective that you see actually in the scripture and earlier in Exodus when uh, Moses asked God, what's your name? God says, yeah, Asher, yeah. He said, you need to know that my name is I be whatever, the good thing, the right thing, I share, the in line thing, the righteous thing. I be the thing that is right. I be whatever is right. So when you talk to God, you should understand that God is the whatever is right. And there's whatever is needed. I am the whatever. You needed bread, and so it was bread for you. Uh, you needed meat, and so I was meat for you. Whatever is needed, God says, I am that. So rather than set your mind on the... the frivolous things that this world frequently has to offer, I encourage you to look to God. Again, quoting the scripture, when Jesus says, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I pray that you will hear this word as you go through your day and go through this season, and that God would be a, the first thing in your life and the first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Shalom and amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day.